Wanderers, welcome to episode 19 of season 2, episode 219. Before we get into it, let's hear a little bit from our title sponsor. Are you in need of excavation work in Spencer, Dubois, Perry, or Warwick counties? Look no further than Silo Ridge Excavating, proudly owned and operated by Jason Haycox. At Silo Ridge Excavating, we specialize in both commercial and residential excavation work. From land clearing to driveway installation, maintenance and repair, we have you covered. We also excel in drainage work, construction site prep, livestock fence installation and repair, and demolition work. With a commitment to communication and customer satisfaction, we offer free estimates to ensure that you're getting exactly what you need. Give us a call today at 812-639-0681 or visit our website at siloridgeexcavating.com to learn more. And don't forget to check them out on Facebook. Trust Silo Ridge Excavating for all your excavation needs. Before we jump into the regular show, let's just have a real quick conversation, Smoke Dragon. Yeah. We work really hard to put content out on YouTube, Spotify, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, we do it all. You help us by subscribing to YouTube, following us on our, all social media platforms, and enjoying our content there as well. Be a friend, help a friend, subscribe today. We would greatly appreciate it. Now, let's get into today's episode. The Wandering Dutchman Podcast. Where none of us are Dutch, but we all live in Holland, Indiana. Join us where we talk about what we all wonder about. This is the Wandering Dutchman Podcast coming to you from Smoker's Lounge. The Wandering Dutchman. Yeah, yeah. The Wandering Dutchman. Yeah. Here we go. Episode 219. Today's date is February 29th of 2024. Leap year. Leap day and leap year. This will be airing on March 8th of 2024. Joining us here in Smoker's Lounge, this is me, the beautiful voice and beautiful beard and handsome little grin sometimes. I am Esquire, as they call me. I've not ah, adopted that as my own. Baby. I'm Casey. Ah, to my right, sporting the plaid and the rose-colored glasses. Getting ready to uh, jump into uh, some deep dive topics. Who used to have a hole in his face, and now it is sutured up and looks like a hell of a scar. Hell yeah. David Allen Smoker. Straight across the table, supporting Bucky's with his big old ass glass full of water to stay hydrated and piss in a bucket because he won't walk outside. Oh, God. Our buddy and everybody's friend, Big Mace. Howdy and, howdy. of course, Couch Guy, the only guy with diabetes on this show. Before we jump into it, though, let's jump into our Hour One sponsor and hear from them now. Hour One of our program is proudly sponsored by Catering by Meyer. As we usher in the new year of 2024, a flurry of events awaits. Graduation parties, weddings, birthdays, family reunions, wedding anniversaries, and class reunions. The excitement is palpable, but so are the logistical challenges of planning these memorable occasions. But fear not, you don't have to navigate the complexities of these events or the planning alone. Say goodbye to stress and hello to simplicity by making just one call to Catering by Meyer. Let the experts at Catering by Meyer Take the reins and turn your vision into reality. Give them a call today to secure your spot and embark on a culinary journey that will exceed your expectations. All right. Big thank you, Catering by Meyer. Oh, gee. We moved them up from hour two to hour one just because, well, they've been in hour two forever. And we can. And we enjoy them being hour one. We, we make do what the, we want. We make the rules. Yeah, that's exactly right. So here we are. It is leap day in leap year. Wowzers. Uh, we're in the lounge and uh, all set and ready to go. We've had some uh, exciting things this week to discuss. Um, I, the topics in hour two look really good. 
a little foreshadowing, but uh, I'm going to go over there to Big Mace and Big Mace update us. Uh, well, it's leap day, so uh, it will officially no longer be uh, February 29th until four more years from now. Yep, about Get, two hours. Here in about two hours, it'll be gone. <laughs> for four years so if you were born today then you won't have a birthday for four years jokes on you <laughs> L- losers yeah <laughs> uh but no losers. other than that so is el- what the uh, elections always on leap years then i guess that has to be huh? uh that's an excellent point dave god, i don't want to taste it oh god <laughs> that's weird <laughs> that's really weird you're extra glimmery today honey. how about you bring your finger over there to where that was that gaping wound <laughs> yeah all right looks like he's sprouting a horn on that side and i like it yeah chicks dig it uh, looks like a nipple chicks dig scars man it kind of kind of looks like you took a prison shank to the side of the face and survived mm-hmm. you should have seen the other guy i was gonna say man <laughs> It was a tough spot. He had his pants down around his ankles. Uh, Good (laughs) grief. Uh, Prison bitch. Oh, prison bitch. (laughs) Won't you be mine? Yeah, Couch Guy remembers that. That's a Rodney Carrington, isn't it? I think it is. Out of everybody, knowing Couch Guy's previous service to our country, which we salute you, (laughs) he's probably been in more homoerotic situations (laughs) than all of us combined. (laughs) Homoerotic. He's not going to... If a bear's hungry, he'll eat, boys. Yeah. I tell you that. Uh, good Lord. Uh, anyway, uh, so kicking off this week, uh, we had basketball season is over. Good. Big fella. Well, yeah. Well, no. hold on here. Yeah, I, Hardwood Mace is trying. It's, now it's time to uh, transition into uh, Diamond Mace. Yeah. Brick Dusk. Brick Hardball dust. Mace. Yeah. Hardball Mace. Whatever you call it. Uh, got my call up for. I wasn't very happy about it, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I'm not going to be the head coach this year. Of the? Scrapyard Dogs. Oh, no. Mm. I'm going to be assistant coach of another team. But I still got to coach a little bit, so I'll be all right. I I don't know if I like this. I (laughs) I I didn't really have a choice in it, but it is what it is. Is this league going to allow you to wear your shoes? Well, they're going to have to because my barefoot coaching days are over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, some bitch going to be in orthotics and the appropriate shoes yes. as needed. Uh, but other than that, so we got baseball. So basketball season wrapped up last weekend. We ended up uh, getting beat first game of pool play or first, first game of bracket play against a couple of really good teams, uh, one from Davies County, Kentucky, Providence, or uh, Clarksville, Providence, Catholic school. They brought a fifth grade team up of like all um, – Inner city Louisville kids, six footers. Yeah, yeah that helps. Uh, actually, You're gonna win some ball games. Actually, that way. Uh, shout out to, um, I'll say his name, Lance Stemler. You know Lance Stemler. You probably don't know Lance Stemler. He played basketball for IU. Okay, I think he graduated 06, 07, somewhere in that area. I could be completely wrong, but his kid was on the team, and he mm. was a coach. And you know, here's all seven foot of six ten of Lance Stemmler walking in the gym. We're like, who the hell's that guy? And the coach of my son's team was like, Oh, come on, Mr. IU. He's not a he's a huge Purdue fan. And he's like, Come on, Mr. IU, you don't know who that is. And I'm like, No, I'm I only listen to Don Fisher and IU basketballs because it's what my dad listened to for two hundred years. I mean that that's yeah. sorry, I'm a bandwagoner. He's like, Oh yeah, he such and such and played it such and such for anyway, kind of neat. But anyway, we got beat. So now basketball's over, <laughs> and we're moving into baseball. And I'm happy about that. Smoke Dragon? Well, got my old stitches out Monday, which was good, because I was, uh, was pretty busy over the weekend. I'm just trying to get projects done around uh basketball tournament and trivia night that was for the kids. Oh, yeah, know. yeah, FTK. Uh, yeah, yeah, FTK for show. Um... Been a busy week at work, busier than uh, normal. Maybe busier is not the word, a little more hectic. There's been like some urgent issues, no problem, you know, nothing big, just urgent. And uh, it's caused me to like, right. here and there. Uh, uh, the middle boy's last basketball practice was just, just got done about two hours ago. He's got his last tournament this weekend. Yep. Uh, the oldest one is in partial baseball practice they start full-time practice i think march 11th mm-hmm. the little one is uh just 
you know, raising hell. Doing wheelbilly stuff. Yeah, doing wheelbilly stuff. Right. That's all I got. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> we couldn't escape the first half of the year. Our bingo card is pretty fooled up by now. Uh, sick kids all week. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, wife was unable to participate in uh, trivia night with us. Bummer. Which uh, I'm sure she would have added a lot to the group. We could have um, used it. Could have used it. <laughs> we were middle of the pack, but we can talk about it here later. Uh, the youngest uh, tested positive for the old flu A. Uh, probably what the wife had the week before. And then the two little ones. Um, I think there's been some fellas down at the daycare uh, that these two associate with that uh, mm. probably were exposed there. So they've gotten over it. They're doing well. Um, but we've just been busy, been busy with baseball. We were able to get outside, which is wild. For the end of February, we were able to get out to Southside Park, get some good work in. And I, you know, people will ask you, like, why do you coach? Like, why do you enjoy? Because I coached all three at one point, Smoke Dragon. Mm. When I first came back, I coached a little bit of the pig skin. Um and then coach basketball and coach baseball. And I always said, like, I enjoyed coaching basketball, like, a lot more. Because baseball, it can be long and arduous process sometimes, some of those games. But I think I enjoyed baseball so much more because you get to be outside. I'll buy that. And you enjoy that early spring weather and the birds are chirping and kids are over there playing at the playground and, you know, all those other good things. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a busy week kind of – making sure the two youngest have somebody to watch them. Um, Monty and Murphy went under the knife this week, had to get a few spots removed. So Do what now? Yeah. Both dogs? Yeah. Spots removed? Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Like, you didn't want the brown anymore. <laughs> so now they're all black and white? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Wow. Uh, they had to get their twofers cleaned. Oh. And so when they so they get knocked out for that, yeah. You ever tried to get plaque off a dog's teeth? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, I'm talk, sorry, talk I, to I my mean, wife yeah, about I that. Get it, but that's so why they were under my don't wife giving them damn chew bones for that. You know, I don't know. My wife decided to remove a couple of fatty, uh, like. Why is my this is pissing me off? It's pissing guys. me off too. Yeah, David. <laughs> I don't Thanks, understand. Pal. I'm trying to look up. Stuff that's going to be relevant for our conversation, and okay. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so anyway, so they were underneath, so they were under. So send me off too. Uh, a couple fatty like tumor, like nothing mm. serious, and then there was a couple like nodules mm. that I had a nodge before. That yeah, I've cut out. So Janelle did that, but mm. uh, I can't believe that I didn't tell. I had foot surgery yesterday. Well, yeah. but I think it's your hour one, your your topic. And well, yeah, matter. but I mean, I oh. could just say that I had it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can talk about it a little bit more if you want. You want to save it? I will later. That's all I got, though. That's, you know, that's the week in a nutshell. That's wild. In a nutshell. Let's talk about Trivia Night. Let's do it. So. It's for the kids. Local organization. FTK. Uh, here called the Teen Outback. Uh, very nice non-for-profit. It's been around for a long time. Uh, probably since we were, what, middle school? I think they said 29 years when we were there. No. It's not. Okay. Because Amanda something. Roman named that thing. You remember that? She named it Teen uh -huh. Outback. But I would say, I don't know. So anyways, they do a yearly fundraiser that's trivia night that has grown to be, what, 80 teams? Is it really? I think it's pretty close to 80 teams. Well, we had 70. 220 70. bucks a team. That's a big money maker. Uh, they make a huge money maker on it. They did provide a charcuterie board this year, mm. which is always nice. I smuggled out a box before we left, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we all know. We all know, big I fella. was sober as a judge. I wasn't. I didn't smuggle anything. They just give me one because mm. they were extras. They were handmade by our friend, said, uh, our friend, Pam, Pam Bolte. She made them. Pam Bolte made all those? Yeah, her and a group of people. They made every one of them stuff. She's a sweetheart. They're nice, too. They look good. Oh, those yeah, rose they're... petal pepperonis. Yeah. <laughs> Felt that bad taking them apart. I mean, I did. I didn't. They you didn't were, feel I bad? smashed them. Yeah. yeah. And them wheat crackers that nobody wanted. But we were middle-of-the-road team. <laughs> well, middle-of-the-road's 
really kind of probably. Hey, what is uh, our captain what was uh, Negan's bat's name? Lucille from from my from the break from the and the old couch guy coming in clutch. Yeah, couch like guy. I, Lucille. I could not think of that for the life of me, and he just pulls it out of his ass, and bam, there it was. And by the way, I want to just little uh, clear some stuff up here. Just just clear the air here. Okay, let's clear it. <sighs> Has your character been attacked online? I think it's kind of bullshit how the, the old jelly bean thing went down. Because they kind of throw that list out there to taunt you. I don't feel like there should have been like multiple of the same. Of the same. Like that four means- different options for cherry. Yeah. Or seven different options for peach. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, are the apple cinnamon turning out being that the cinnamon was so overpowered? Well, who that knew it was, it was pumpkin pie? Who the heck eats pumpkin pie with a whole GD cinnamon stick on top? Not me. <laughs> Not- like I like just a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg yeah. per yeah, the yeah, recipe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then drown that bitch in and cool think, whip. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool whip. <laughs> I don't know why I said. Are you cool. a spray <laughs> or a dollop? Bofa. Okay. But normally the warden, she'll get the spray. I like the spray. I kind of like, I grew up on the tub. Because everybody that knows Varsity Blues <laughs> loves. <laughs> if there's some young whippersnappers the listen to what this. What the hell other show did we? <laughs> ah, damn it. The movie uh, Blockers, Cock Blockers. I haven't seen that ever. Actually. Oh, God. Did no. they have one in there too? <laughs> oh, good Lord. Have you seen Cock Blockers? <laughs> yeah, good Lord. <laughs> the butt jugging. Yeah. <laughs> Couch it's guy's probably participated in that. Great flick. Couch guy has probably participated never, in that. He ain't never butt chugged. Yeah, he has. We're not to that point. No. But you know what's good? You know, the nice thing about trivia night is you see people that you don't necessarily always run into. A mm. uh, friend of the program, Tyson Breedemeyer. You know, I, mm. I'm not in town much. Did but- you know that he had those auctioneer capabilities? Oh, yeah, I doubt it Because I know Couch Guy didn't. Couch Guy was floored. I think they said it was the first time he ever did it. No. That's what they said. Then they lied, just okay. like the, the number of years that oh. they've been going. Yeah. It's a lie. Okay. Couch, Tyson's done that several times. Okay. okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I had a lot of fun with it. But the funny part was, a little inside baseball here. Go ahead. <laughs> so everybody on this trivia committee takes like a – a topic or like a section of questions mm-hmm. and then that person is supposed to compile the questions per the se- per the uh yeah. per that section you know and i guess some of the vetting processes of the questions were because there was a few of them that we hung them on remember i, I don't remember uh, the 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 it Which was, one was the it? mask and not nutty professor or something like jim that. carrey and not eddie murphy yeah something like that so like we hung them on a couple of them where the question was like the the potential answers or wrong. How many of those questions do you think were written by uh, AI? I don't know. Do you think some of them were? No. I doubt it. They were all together over at uh, Beekler's, and they all had their little question-making party out there. Okay. I don't think they did. I don't know. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. But I feel like there's another one that I was pondering on this week that I think that they were wrong on. I don't remember which one. I'll try to... <laughs> Oh, thinker here, yeah. yeah. I uh, I have a lot of fun with it, but like, I didn't have a good time. Hey, your foot, big guy. And I was, uh, that was rough, guys. Like I, you kind of were a wet blanket on I, a good time. I know, and I felt bad, and I was kind of being a dick, and I tried to drink a beer. Like I, you know, kept stealing swigs of uh, beer off the warden, you know, to maybe help lighten it up. And then I just, yeah, I don't know, man. I was in a tremendous amount of pain that evening, and I did not like it i was not in pain i was just a wet blanket i yeah. just well yeah you were kind of being. can, can i make an admission kind of being a bitch sure. when i got home and seen my lovely bride mm-hmm. she's like how was it and i was like i didn't have fun this year yeah and i told her i was like yeah big mace was in pain smoke dragon just a lot going on he just wasn't his normal jolly self so i felt like it was a little bit of a letdown of an evening mm-hmm. yeah we we probably could have shown up better but you know, here's what it is, though. <laughs> we could have shown up. Better. <laughs> hey, we look good, though. Yeah. Have, yeah. We look hey, good. Hey, Couch Guy did have fun because he showed up drunk, got yeah. more drunk, and then left drunk. Drunker. No, 
that's that's false. He said he's got his own little unit, and it was a .05, and he was good to go. .05. When was the last time that thing was recalibrated? Exactly. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah. But it was a good uh, it was a good time. We'll we'll Great participate again. Yeah, yeah, hey, huge, we, huge, huge. I'd love there. to be able to run a f- fundraiser where you collect fifteen plus grand in one night just off of fifteen. Hell, was it more than that? Wasn't it? What'd you say? Eighty tables at two hundred and twenty. No, oh, I thought you said it was twenty. An, an easy, cool twenty one grand right out of the gate. Well, by the time you do all the other stuff, oh yeah. yeah. You know they I take. I thought a for sure that I'd sales. have a little uh, better luck at the. Um, Rock, paper, scissors deal, but I know we do spot. pretty good on that. Yeah. yeah, I trusted you, Dave. I know. You only took me so far. Yeah. Other than the heads like and the heads, third round. Heads or tails. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, we hung in there pretty long. Well, but that. you figure that eighty tables, eighty tables times eight, six hundred and forty people. So they did two of those things where you took a dollar. So there's an extra Well, not everybody thousand. participated. Yeah, but you're gonna get at least five hundred people. Eighty tables. Uh, for Mulligans, and there was only one table that didn't do it, and they called them out, and they did. So there's another 800 bucks. That was so funny. That's what that and guilt the, tripped them into. And the too. people that didn't do it, how about made the total raffled sense. off Macnees? Yeah. Well, which there now I don't know how that all shook out because I I think the one they barely covered the cost of an actual of the actual. Yeah, they only got sixty bucks. Yeah. For and so what? Five is, Big Macs and what's five Big Macs and five large fries run a guy. You know what so I mean? Long, That's got to be pretty. They might have walked down there and said it was for charity though. Oh yeah, yeah. Bullshit. The man family maybe donated. Yeah, That's who owns that bad boy. Could have. Um, I, the thing that bothers me about trivia night is people that are like movies. Like even though I watch some movies. Like, I'm not in depth to, like, who won an Oscar or who won a Grammy. Like, yeah. that stuff just is out of <laughs> well, the... Well, that was the whole entire t- topic of the, the evening. Basically. Well, so what I'm going to do next year theme, when we I have think. this... Red theme carpet. What theme. Theme. So based on the theme, we shall study a little bit for it, I yeah. think. Oh, we're going to yeah. study. I think, well, I think... I'm out. We <laughs> say we're going to study. <laughs> I was going to say... Uh, preparing is not really our MO. No. <laughs> no everybody, yeah, no. would agree on that. But look how good we do. Couch guy didn't even know there was a theme. <laughs> Think about, yeah, middle of the pack. We got the same thing the fourth place team got. Uh, uh, you damn right. We, yeah, we yeah. did. Uh, but it's all good. It's all fun and dandy. But, it's for uh, the kids. It is for the kids. So we'll FTK. be back We'll be back next year. Um, maybe I, we'll, I want to talk about something today. Well, hold on. Can I think? finish up one more thing? Yeah. I think we got to do a live podcast next year from it. We'll that set up. That would be terrible. Mm. Why would it be terrible? The audio? Yeah, it'd be a, especially that blown ass speaker. Oh, man. We oh, need to talk to the, the frequency of that need stuff. To, we need all. to talk to the fine folks at the Huntingburg Event Center and see if they need a little. Uh, well, they'll watch this. Need some tips and tricks on how to better their sound. We did run into some fans, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mayor Neil Elkins. Yeah. Fan. He came over and said hi. Uh, never had personally met him before. Probably not a good thing now that he knows who I am. So I'll probably, that's a tough spot. Probably get you're fired. in the crosshairs. Yeah. Yeah. Probably get fired soon. So. Well, when you're up there on your l- leave duty for the next three weeks, yeah, you know, that's what? Good. leave I, duty. I don't know. Are you going to have to go to work? No, you're going to spend six weeks sitting at home. Four minimum. My goodness, I can't work. Couch guy's going to come sit on your I'm couch. A street department laborer. My job is a laborer. There's nothing in there that says. Desk jockey or pencil pusher. Well, maybe it should. I can't. I'm all out. I'm going to come home one day, smoke, and I'm going to see him and couch guy up on the roof laying there. The f*** you would. I mean, unless there's going to be some sort of, sort of <laughs> cherry picker to get my ass up there. Couch guy gets you up there. No. He'll get you up there. For <laughs> what about with the, what was the military helicopters flying over today? Did you see that? Three black military. Yes, yes. sir. And they were like treetop high. Yes. I mean, them bastards were. They looked kind of like the FBI's like hostage rescue that's little what, bas- well, bad boys. They weren't. Yeah. Th- so that's what I was Googling before that last video popped up that it was a, uh, I don't, it wasn't, they weren't Blackhawks. They were more like bubbly looking. Yeah, that's what I'm like, saying. Like, like Bell helicopters. They weren't they weren't like a whatever the hell they are. What? Kiowa. Kiowa. Oh. Whatever the hell he's talking about. Yeah. You don't even know what Why don't you just get a mic? There's a microphone right in front of your happy ass. Kiowa? Kiowa helicopter? I mean, it's not a big deal what kind of helicopter it was. It's more yeah, of a big deal who's in there. there. Yeah. But they rolled through almost probably what was that, eight AM? 
Yeah, and then they came back this evening. Yes. Really? That's not what it was. A Bell OH-58 Kiowa. That did not look like that because it didn't have that big uh, ball-looking thing on it. Yeah, it's really not that important. Not yeah, that important. I feel like we're digressing. Yeah, we really are. Really breaking down this. Well, thing. shut up. I'm trying to get to the base of this because of the different types of helicopters fly different types of people. Maybe it was a Pima. That's probably what it was. Mm. A Pima. Oh. A those, Bell OH-58A Pima. Those old Pimas. That's what it kind of looked like. Because it kind of looked like a air evac or like just a regular old run-of-the-mill news helicopter but there were three of them they were flying in formation and they were black all of them yeah so i don't know but i don't know where they were going they were going straight north and they were there for the day and then this evening about six o'clock five thirty six o'clock they all three flew straight back south yeah hmm. could have been a security detail for I something don't know. it was wild i don't, I don't know that we I just, they see we seem to see them every now and then flying over but used to kind of neat Used to. You remember when the state police would get out and fly fields looking for marijuana? Do they just not do that anymore? I hope not. <laughs> Jeez. Here comes his drug test. Jeez pool. Louise. Hey, we're going to need you to come in. <laughs> yeah. Give a piss sample. I got a yellow bucket up here. We'll get it for uh, yeah, you. I'll sell you some. Uh, so, uh, yeah. The pot planes, they found a big old patch just, uh, what, east? No, west of my house. Really? Yes, sir. Like acres of it. Uh, actually, a friend of the program was running the uh, grain harvester whenever huh. he stumbled upon the patch and immediately called the authorities, and they came out and got several of them. They were using the, a big creek to access the uh, grow there. I just wonder how... Like I don't know often how many it happens anymore. Acres there was, but it was quite a bit. Hmm. It's kind of like cooking meth. Seems ballsy, huh? Seems ballsy. Why? Like why would you need acres? Well, I shouldn't say acres. It was probably like an acre, but they had it in between the rows of corn. Mm. Okay, so where it would grow. I guess I just pictured like a whole field full of no it was just in the, oh. it was in the off row i was trying to figure out why it was in the off row but they grow it in the corn to where it would cuz it's obviously there's no weeds cuz it's yeah. roundup ready corn but they well there was some weeds yeah there was a lot of weeds different kind of in weeds in that one spot but then they they you know cuz like a field corn on average would grow 7 8 you know 8 feet tall probably good grief yeah and depending on the strain of marijuanas they can keep them to be about six or seven foot so they'd be oh, good shit. shy yeah Never damn. but it's kind of ballsy like you said though because you got to make sure to get in there and get it out before they start shelling corn which this one they obviously didn't mm -hmm. which is probably a big conundrum for some of those weed folk that are toasted out of their mind remembering yeah where they uh put I wonder those if things. that's what causes chronic wasting disease in the deer population eating pot in mm -hmm. fields because they're wasted Mm -hmm. No, I think that's got something to do with a uh, a tick or a fly or something. I like that backdoor joke you were going to, though. Solid. Chronic wasting? Yeah, now I wasted. Get it. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Went over the big fellow there. Uh, I've had an issue on Monday mornings. What is it? Damp trousers. Pee your pants? My trousers are damp. I pissed my pants yesterday. <laughs> You ain't cool unless you pee in your, your pants. pants. Call me Miles Davis. Davis. <laughs> no, so we when we your do dryer laundry broke. When we do laundry on Sundays, we uh, we'll do a damp dry and then we hang to dry in <laughs> finality. Mm -hmm. Well, my trousers finality don't trousers sit. or slacks. I don't know what you would what's, pants. What's the difference? They're Dockers. Oh. I don't know. No, they're not Good fancy Dockers. God, oh, my back. God. Esquire. Esquire. They're not fancy Dockers. That's where the helicopters were going. My Dockers. <laughs> <laughs> Draw my boss. <laughs> what a douche. But it's man. not in the... Uh... <laughs> I bet they ain't no Carhartts, are they? I'd wear Carhartt slacks. They're nice. If they have the full 360 flex. <laughs> they nice. <laughs> I bet the Carhartt's pants are just as expensive as the Dockers. I rip him some bitches out on the daily. Not the daily. Probably maybe once every quarter. I do like the crotch gusset and these Duluths. Gusset. That's a fun word to say. Is that what you, because you probably, you wear kind of 
you don't have a specific cash. Yeah. Yeah. Jeans and a collared shirt. Now jeans every day or just jeans on Friday? Jeans every day is fine. Really? Really. Do you have to wear a collared shirt? I mean, business casual. You're supposed to. I mean, is I guess that, it doesn't like, have to be did you policy. sign a paper that says that I No, there's worry. just an office etiquette. You read the room thing. See, like, you don't understand that because you're not in our world. No. But you, you kind of read the room I and have you to know wear uniforms. Yeah. So well, the la- the o- two and only jobs that I've ever had required uniforms. Yeah. Or some sort of well, the first job it was optional. Like you either wore the uniforms that they supplied or you had to wear <laughs> like a class three vest. Mm. I chose the vest because the uniforms blew ass. So then this time there is no option. You wear the uniforms. That's it. They uh they have a thing at the resort called resort casual, mm. which is generally golf shirt and I feel like you could probably non jean pants like a, a Hawaiian shirt for resort casual. Yeah, some thong flip flops or those uh, the daggone Kathy things shorts. I wanted for our beach picture is the those Dutch white flowy pants. Gosh, oh shirts. yeah, can we get those? I just feel like I can't be out like no shirt in the summer like I normally am. No, yeah, yeah that's ass. all changed for you. Yeah, like I uh, like you yell at now the you fat wear the horns the of summer. a cuckold. <laughs> God, I hope not. <laughs> not real. Just you wear the horns of a survivor on your <laughs> face. Hey, friend of the program, by the way, Lee Vogler. Um, what are you doing on a day? I'm on one tonight, boys. I'm going to kick you in your freaking foot. Oh, I wouldn't feel it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Friend of the program, Lee Vogler. Shout out Rumble Construction, too, by yeah, the way. Yeah. He said if we could negotiate with him on our ad price, maybe there was a chance. But Okay. Uh, anyways, <laughs> we were down at the Legion last night, and he was talking about, I got an extra bike. We'll go to the boogie. And they said, I know smoke yeah, would be in. Dog. He's like, well, I got a uh, mud volleyball tournament, so we'd only go, we'd only be able to go Thursday night. <laughs> Leroy has two motorcycles? Yeah, he, I think he rides like an enduro bike kind of deal. Oh, yeah, cool. So they get out there and ride a little bit. But yeah, yeah. What about, uh, okay, so TV shows. I, I've been, uh, yeah, you're going to be an expert on this. Yeah, I've been really locked in here. So, Casey, do you remember the Murdoch? Do you remember? Yes, I do. The Murdoch trials? Yeah, Murdoch. Murdoch. So I downloaded a new uh, streaming channel Okay. called Fox Nation. Yeah, I've heard have of it. Have you seen that? Yeah. It's only like six bucks. They've got... Uh, America's Most Wanted, like all kinds of the old the goodies. History in Six Glasses is one is of them. Is that what is it called? Something of that nature. Yeah, that so like he was talking about another show that I need to try, but they're... I've not seen it. It just right. has Jim Belushi in it. So the how, the fall of the House of Murdaugh yeah. is another like... I don't know how many part series it is, and it's... it's what a, do you really think happened there? He killed her. He killed him. Alec Murdaugh was at... He was at the... Kennels, and he killed Paul and Maggie in cold blood. You really think that? Hands down, without a doubt. Yeah. You'd I, go on. I I don't know. I guess I I don't doubt that he killed him, but I think there let me, was. Let me rephrase that. I think there was external forces that re, that forced him to do that. He had he had a huge part in their death. I'll say that. Whether yes. or not he he pulled the trigger or not, that's problematic because that. Like from the time that their phones were dead and the like the satellite pings, and when he called nine one one, there was only like seventeen minutes of, of window, and they said with the blood spatter from Paul alone, you would have looked like you took a shower in it because the dude Paul was killed with a twelve gauge shotgun at point blank range, yeah, and there was brain matter like everywhere, bad, bad, and they said that there was absolutely no way that. He could have, there was no time for him. His alibi was solid in that end, in that aspect of, like, he, there's no way he could have had enough time to get it off of him. That's what, and like he said, I don't know if you've ever cleaned up blood before, but it doesn't come off that easy. You know what I mean? You ever have a bloody nose, like when you're sleeping and you don't know it, you yeah. wake up and you it's just got it stuck everywhere. In there forever? Yeah. Good grief. That's what I, and that, that's wake what, up with a bloody nose? <laughs> not wake up with a bloody nose. Yeah, you wake like up you... after having had a bloody nose through your skull. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So I've been I've been tying into that the house the fall of the house of Murdoch on Fox Nation, and it, it's a lot juicier than the uh, 
than the Netflix special was. Yeah, the Netflix special was interesting. I just my feeling of it is is I I to me there's a certain MO that fits somebody that's able and capable to commit murder. So and to me, he I doesn't. feel like he was a thief. Yeah. He was a liar. That was it. And he was a piece of shit. That's what they said with the the jury, his jury trial. Was. Yeah, he's not going to. Did you c- see any of this? Okay. So he embezzled. I'm I don't know. Sure who murdered all his. I don't know how many millions. millions. Yeah. I don't know how many millions of dollars that he embezzled from that him. him. Yeah. Looks like a giant twat. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dave, he, his family. So he his family. Football, in, he played in, football uh, in college, college football player. But his family they said real quick. Let me finish this thought. They said that he, it wouldn't have mattered what he was on trial for. They would have convicted after him. the prosecutor threw all that stuff out about him embezzling money from his clients. Like the one lady had her, he got like eighty grand out of her because she had won like some four hundred million, four hundred thousand dollar claim because her daughter was killed in a car wreck or some shit like that. He's like, not only did her daughter die, you took her for eighty grand you know, right out of the gate, like yeah. as if she's got enough shit to worry about and you're stealing money from this woman. So like they, the prosecutor painted a very, very vivid photo of what type of piece of shit this person was. And it said, it didn't matter if he was on trial for smashing Mrs. Daisy's finger in the door, he was going to be guilty. Yeah. Regardless of what. So this family, Dave, to give you a history, they're in the low country of South mm-hmm. Carolina. Yeah. And his dad and his dad's dad, old grandpappy and great grandpappy, were long in the history of uh, lawman, lawman in the in the low country there. As in, they were the judge in the old South. So you could imagine they had because uh, the murders were committed out on some kind of hunting estate, Moselle. Yeah, that was yeah. their. Uh... And so the just money. So their son that was killed right. was actually involved in a. That's Paul. Uh, and that's Maggie, and that's Buster. Yeah, that's Buster. Paul was in a boat wreck with. Uh, he was driving a boat, and he was intoxicated. Yeah, and they come back from a place down river, and they had a boat wreck, kills somebody, and basically his dad and grandpa like went instantly in on the cover up. Yeah, and it's a big cause like the Netflix the hospital, documentary. They're in the hospital still, and he walks in like he's their buddies, and hey, we're gonna get it. Taken yeah, don't care. worry about we'll, it. We'll, we'll get take it. I'll take of care. Shit. And so it took it's them just like a dirty, dirty, dirty thing. Yeah. You, if you watched it, you would instantly be pissed off about the tactics and antics of these mm. people. Yeah, it really was. But it's I'll have to I'll have to check that out because yeah. so I've been tying into that one lately, and I've also been watching uh, another quirky one I was telling Dave about before the show tonight. I've been watching that Resident Alien. Have you yeah. Seen that uh-uh. on Netflix. <laughs> it's stupid, but it's funny. I got into uh, it's on Hulu, and I think it's on ABC. But Will Trent, he's a detective. Just started it. It's in season two, I think, now. But he's a detective that is illiterate because of his dyslexia. Oh, wow. And But he's really observant from all the other things because oh. that's how he's worked. Uh, it's been pretty interesting Have so far. Have you seen The Tourist Mm-mm. on Netflix? My parents are really into that one. Um, it's it's weird. I've been reading. Oh, we've been reading. Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't realize Game of Thrones started as a book series. Yes, Dave. So I am reading the book series. Interesting. Do you like it so far? Mm-hmm. You really have that much time to read? Mm, 20 minutes at a time. or uh, Well, actually, I, that's all I've been doing in the evening, like when I get done. So I normally get about an hour and a half each night to read, and then I'll that's a knock wild off thing. a couple chapters in a 20 minutes or sit on the front porch. 20 and- minutes? Yeah, I mean, they're like 15, 20 page chapters. They're not real long. Does somebody got one of the dog's paws Call cutting the door Call out there? It. It's, it's probably Jenna getting home. No, that's uh, Dances with Wolves. They got a, there's probably a group of coyotes across the road. Uh-huh. Dick, Dixie's communicating with Uh, her, So with TikTok her, this week? With her Ken. Oh, Dick, mine's TikTok been this week's been interesting. Uh, there's a guy, I think the account, Joel Mon, J O E L M A U N. And so, the big thing on TikTok now is uh, we're podcasters. Of course, we have yes iPhone cameras. Yes. We're podcasters. Of course, we sit around and talk in front of microphones. So this one's like a husband and wife team. And she'll be like, we're a, um, you know, such and such couple. Of course, we this. And he goes, 
I'm a such and such thing. Of course, I'm depressed and want to kill myself. And, and she's, she's like, like she's like, come you, on, you're not this, supposed to do this. It's not what you're supposed to do. You're like, we've <laughs> talked about this. So it's like a long line of just like the most realistic things where he's like, of course, I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. And it's just, it is yeah, hilarious. So funny. And she'll be like, honey, we talked about this, like you're not positive and optimistic. <laughs> like you're not supposed to tell everybody these things are bad. And it's uh, just hilarious. My TikTok is, uh, Boobs. Froggy Fresh is back. Who's Froggy Fresh? Tyler Cassidy. Who's Tyler Cassidy? Krispy Kreme. I, you keep saying it like I know you who it is. You don't know who they I, I can't when, when When the group message said something like it's a blast from the past, he's so grown up looking, I think I remember now hearing of a Krispy Kreme. Yeah, Cream. Froggy so, Fresh. Krispy Kreme and on, Money Maker Mike. I am the baddest of them all. If you ain't my money, then I don't mess with y'all. No, nope, never heard it. What? God and money maker Mike, yeah, he was a uh, internet sensation quite some years ago. I tell you what, internet sensation. He's I also is. that one that uh, I'm about to lose some calories on my dick. You ever seen that one? He's he's playing a church piano. <laughs> You're about to lose some cal- burn some calories on my dick. It's uh, what do you call that? Comedic musician, something like that. Yeah, he's funny. I'll be damned. My TikTok's been this awful. Can I play this oh, real sure. quick? Yeah. I'm Joel, and I truly we're working. We're working parents. Of course our new hobby is baking bread because we can't afford anything else. I'm Joel, and I truly believe the American dream is dead. No, no, no. No, no, no. We're supposed to do it's relatable not content, anymore. not all just straight depression. We're working parents. Of course our maternity leave is less than 13 weeks in America. I'm Joel, and the thought of an asteroid impact brings me peace. No, 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 no. Okay, we need to do but it's so like I just love it because it's just uh, it's funny because there's one like where he's like I'm so happy she's like oh that's good that's an improvement right he goes we live close to a nuclear power plant and we're in the red zone <laughs> <laughs> sorry go on though <laughs> what was your TikTok you said oh this woman I think in Michigan that like killed her 15 year old autistic son oh my oh, god no David. like she had her. God son, damn. like administer all the torture. Like it's awful, and it's just really. But I keep watching it, and then it makes me sad, and then I just want to like you know, end people. Well, yeah, just tie them to bricks and throw them in a river, just barely deeper than they are tall, so they can get all their arms out, but they can't get their nose dead. out. Yeah. Uh, I saw one where this woman abandoned her child in the playpen for ten days. The three year old. Yeah, that's was in Indiana. I just, yeah, I turned that one off because it said graphic stuff coming up and I couldn't handle it. There's a, there are, uh, <clears throat> I 16 I, pounds that baby was. I that would, toddler was. Yeah. I would have no problem. I could live with myself if I was called on to duty to end that woman. Like I could live with oh, it. Oh, I've, I've, and I think there'd be I, a jury I, nullification is the technical term jury nullification. I don't think you could, where they wouldn't commit you. You don't think so? No. Oh, I think in a heartbeat. You think you can end a woman? You think you can end another human's life? If it, if oh, there was wow. something we that I can't talk about that on here, can we? <laughs> I, but I think there's people listening to this in their vehicle right now that are like, yeah, I could. If somebody I'd lose did something, more sleep over hitting a cat on the road, knowing it's probably some little girl's cat that mm. would a yeah. certain group of people. In the world. Uh, that person that you're talking about in Michigan, the woman that I was, think it was Michigan. Yeah. It was, she murdered her, the death of her disabled 15 year old son. Mm-hmm. He only weighed 69 pounds. Yeah. Like she was starving him. She dumped, she'd have the son dump like this California Reaper, Carolina Reaper hot sauce mm-hmm. down his throat, mm-hmm. put him in ice baths, starved him, locked all the cabinets shut. True Just evil. Came, yeah. Like I can't There's imagine. true evil in this world. I can't imagine it. Mm. Well, Poor kid. Dave, that's a great light topic. I there. don't understand why your TikTok is that, though. The one came on, and I just couldn't. <laughs> How do you get into that algorithm? Wow. Well, that's, I told Jen about it. I was like, I'm at work, and I don't know. I might I might tear up. She was like, you're <laughs> responsible for your own algorithm. I was like, I can't stop watching. Every time it turns on, I, I watch You're it. responsible for your own <laughs> algorithm. Hey, speaking of one that was on my algorithm, you know the women in that other country that put those gold rings around their necks and stretch them real long? Yeah. There was a video today of like how they clean their necks. How do they clean their necks? With I like some like sort a, of rag. 
I bet it goes through and you do it like a violin. I bet that's disgusting. I don't know. Yeah, but like it was like a whole video of like, like a, a minute or so TikTok of them I women like I, washing their necks. I don't think they actually stretch their necks very much, though. I think huh? it's. I thought I seen somewhere where that's more of an optical illusion. <laughs> I don't know, I man. Mean, this bitch. Some... This bitch looked pert near to a giraffe. Whenever. <laughs> well, I think it. I think it's more that the shoulders are just. Oh, like her clavicles are collapsing like down well, i'm not talking about her clavicles i'm sure she's a very <laughs> honest woman <laughs> what clavicle is your collarbone oh what did you think you're an idiot it sounded different uh clavicle did, what, what was you thinking i was talking about her tits no <laughs> now let me see that <laughs> no let me that was a part of the resident evil or resident uh alien show he uh now let's take a look at that tit <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, this alien comes to comes to. We can't do the show digressions anymore. I Everybody know. hates them. This yeah. dude is. Uh, he takes the life. And of here, a we human. here we go. Here we go. Anyways, <laughs> a human doctor. Anyway, our buddy he John. Goes, f- him. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our buddy John Rodich says, "Get off the Googler machine." He does. He doubles down. Oh, Eat shit. good grief! Eat shit, Rodich. <laughs> Did you guys see where Cam Newton got jumped at a seven on seven football tournament? <laughs> he did. Where in your right mind do you think attacking a six five, probably two oh, yeah. thirty five guy mm-hmm. that had grown men that were trying to end him that you think from some guy off the street you can come fight him? Uh, do the rings actually uh, stretch their necks? And it says it's mostly illusory. So you are right, David. Yes. Uh, Says the weight of the rings twist the collar blown, 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 or bone, which is the clavicle that I was oh, okay. uh, ca- talking about, and eventually the upper ribs at a forty-five degree angle, lower than what is natural, causing the illusion of elongated necks. Is that what cock rings are for? <laughs> no, I can't say, f- but we can say cock ring. <laughs> now, what's what's wrong with this? Because cock rings are funny. To- God dang you. <laughs> You guys suck. Um, yeah, I don't know. My TikTok's all over the map all the time, going back to where oh, we really started this canoe here. But uh, another topic I wanted to talk about, which well, I'll just save that anyway for my my topic because it kind of plays into that. So uh, a little playing, a little bit. Of- yeah, we got new candles. Um, Thanks to Couch, couch guy. guy. Brought us some new candles. Uh, this one here is from the. Uh, We're gonna have to dump some of that uh, wax. Wax in the bucket, maybe. Yeah. This one's from Candle Theory, uh, crafted by hand. Um, it's uh, This one is called Crackling Hearth, is what we're smelling here. And it's got some it's got some leathery... Gosh, God, you can't sit that. What? <laughs> what? I can't say it on air. <laughs> oh, You'll have to check later. God. Cackling Hearth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> didn't get it. Uh, uh, so good. anyway, yeah, it's uh, it smells good. It's got some leather tones to it. You like leather, don't you? Yeah, and it's got the it's a wood wick, so it's got some some other cacklers to it. I got a wood wick candle on my nightstand. Uh, the bride has a couple wood wicks in there, and I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Yeah, the cacklers. Oh yeah, real. F- <laughs> 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 uh. And with that, we're gonna take a break. We'll see you right. Well, actually, we're not. We're going to do three big things. <laughs> oh, yeah. We forgot about those. Our buddy Brad Oho, is a huge part of the show. He keeps sending them in. We keep reading them. Did you see what the AI said on this latest TikTok, latest short that we put? Uh-uh. I said Brad O is a huge part of the show, and it said Brat O. B-A-B-R-A-T-T-O. Brat O. Brat O. Yeah. You're not going through and uh, editing no, for it. To... on my phone. Yeah, thanks for the little bit of effort there. <laughs> uh, moon landing, the Odysseus lunar lander, nicknamed Odie. Oh, is that probably Odysseus? O d y s s e u s. Odysseus. You wouldn't know how to say it. Not a chance. No. Also known, Odie has become the first U.S. made spacecraft to touch down on the moon in fifty years. The uncrewed Forever. lander is upright and starting to send data. According to Odie's developer, Intuitive Machines. All right, then, Dutchman, does this open the door to putting humans back on the moon soon? We already did. Space Allegedly. Ex- SpaceX just put a dude up there last week. On the moon? Huh? No, this this is that. 
It wasn't SpaceX. It was that. But I think it's actually got a broken leg now. I think it toppled over, and it's just taking oh, shit. weird pictures. Uh, <laughs> kind of like a turtle on its back? <laughs> yeah, and the batteries are dying. And, oh, uh, no. Because my news feed today was uh, not quite dead, still sending a couple lowly pictures or some horse shit like that. But That's a tough spot. Yeah. I don't know. Probably the, probably the Chinese up there uh, came Kicked over. it over. Kicking the shins. Nancy Kerry did it. Kicking the shins <laughs> out of it. <laughs> I thought it was the SpaceX launches the Intuitive Machines yes. Nova C Moon Lander. Yeah, that's That's it. this? Yes. Well, I thought he's talking about something called Odysseus or Odie. Yeah, that's the name of the... La- so they... And that's the... They send it up on the rocket. Yeah. So SpaceX was the rocket, and then the, that thing was the the Odysseus called Uber, which happened to be like SpaceX in this, and just got a ride up there. MLB players concerned about uniforms see through pants. Major League Baseball players have been faced with an unusual problem ahead of the new season: a malfunctioning wardrobe. Kind of give new, kind of gives new meaning to getting peanuts at the ball game, huh? I feel like have you, you seen have any of this? Gone with a. One strike, two balls. Like I feel like it would have been a better, <laughs> better joke there. Yeah. Have you seen any of this stuff? No. no. So this year's uniforms are made by, they're Nike uniforms, but they're made by Fanatics. Okay. So That's Fanatics. Cheap stuff normally. Yes. So Fanatics is getting roasted right now because like the back of the jerseys they did, I forget who it was. Uh, somebody did a side-by-side comparison of this, last year's jersey and this year's jersey. And the type and font on the back is so small that it almost looks like one of those jersey shirts you order as like a fan of a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And somebody actually sent a comment on Twitter or X. Sorry, Elon. Shout out, Elon. Um, to Fanatics, like customer service. And they're like, oh, that looks like there was an error or a problem. Let's go ahead and get you that sent and taken care of right away. Is that because it's like his pockets? Or his it, shirt. That's it's probably a in. shirt tail tucked in that and then far. The, his pants are that yeah, see through. See through. Good God. But they were. But the MLB Players the Association is like, this isn't going to fly. So yeah, see Fanatics their, uh, is taking it on the chin right now. Hang downs, hanging down. There. Yeah, that's true. Uh, North Korea welcomes tourists again. Oh, here we go. Some Russian nationals were offered a rare opportunity to visit North Korea for the first time since the pandemic. That's we, not a tourist. That is an alliance. Would when are we booking the our The Dutchman flights? accept an invitation to North Korea if offered. Not a Negatory. Chance. Why? Only if we can go with Dennis Rodman. Negatory. <laughs> no, I ain't got no business in North Korea. I don't have any respect for that. <laughs> Kim Jong Il. <laughs> Yeah. Mongolians. Uh, no, what the hell? Hong's bricks. That's it. <laughs> you just got to watch World Police a couple times before we go. They'll yeah. Load up on content. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, I probably like you, Dave. I got no business over there. I'm not going. And next thing you know, you look at somebody the wrong way and you end up in a prison for the rest of your life. Or they look at me the wrong way. And they wind up with a shank in their eye. <laughs> And with that, we'll finally take a break. Yeah, we'll be right back. Hey, Wonders, get ready to laugh until your sides hurt at the Gaslight Pizza and Grill on Historic 4th Street in Huntingburg. Join us on April the 6th for a night of hilarious comedy featuring the one and only Curtis Crow, yours truly, the Wandering Dutchman, and the headliner, all the way from Chicago, Mr. DJ Ribsky. Grab all your friends and come out for a night of delicious food, great drinks, and nonstop laughter. Don't miss out on this one-of-a-kind evening of entertainment. Get your tickets now before they sell out, and we hope to see you there. Hey! And we're back. Nice little break there. Fresh jalapeno cheddar dog from Merkley's off the old glizzy machine. Hell yeah. Get you refueled. Hey, before we get into Hour 2, let's hear from our buddy, Matt Krieg. Hour 2 is presented by Matt Krieg of Krieg Insurance. Our friend Matt Krieg has a passion for helping others and a keen ear for listening to your needs. Matt goes above and beyond to ensure you and your family are protected. Whether it's life insurance, health insurance, or Medicare supplements, Matt Krieg is dedicated to finding the best solutions tailored just for you. 
His commitment to excellence and personalized service sets him apart in the industry. Don't settle for just any insurance agent. Choose one who embodies the traits of success and truly cares about your well-being. Give Matt a call today and experience the difference firsthand. All righty, brother. One hell of a model American. Amen. Brother. <laughs> Big fella, what you got to start us off an hour two? Surgery. Mm. I wanted to talk about surgery. Tell us about it. Well, I had surgery yesterday. I had a, like I said last week, a three and a half centimeter by three and a half centimeter ganglion cyst resected from my medial tarsi. In layman's terms, I had a ball of shit cut out of my right ankle. There you go. And it uh, was pushing on a bunch of nerves in there, and they had to do a nerve release on, like, I don't know how many, he said, three or four different nerve trunks and this and that. They said it was supposed to be, like, an hour and a half surgery. Well, it turns out it went two hours. Okay. Pretty close, though. Yeah. And I had something happen to me in part of the surgery that I've never had before. It was a wild experience. I uh, almost felt like a woman for a minute. Somebody rubbing your nipples? No. <laughs> Close. I got an epidural. Mm. A spinal. They gave me a spinal, which is a wild thing. I don't know if I could have it done. Yeah, you could. They gave you your cocktail. So when I get in there, uh, well, I was actually getting ready to go back to the room and the uh, the anesthesiologist woman come and get me and she's getting ready to push something in my IV and she's like, I'm going to give you your morning cocktail. You ready? And I'm like, what? She said, your morning cocktail. And I was like, oh, okay. And it was a mixture of like Versed and a couple other drugs that kind of made me start to slur my speech a little bit. <laughs> I'm getting a little extra chatty and whatnot. Funny. I'm a really, that's terrible, but like I'm usually pretty funny when I'm on drugs. <laughs> but, uh, they uh, So I get back there, and they get me up on the table, and then they let me, like, my legs hang over the side of the table, and then I had to, like, slump over, and they kept saying, like, like arch your back like a cat, you know, like you're doing that cat thing, you know, like arch your back, put your shoulders down, tuck your chin, and, like, and then, then they said, like, pop your ass out like you're, like you're, like you're dropping it like you're you know, booty dropping, like pop, lock, and drop it. And I was like, what? And they're like, the, the one girl in there, she knew who I was, and she's like, come on, Mace, you know, like you're on the dance floor getting ready to drop it like it's hot. And I'm like, okay. So anyway, they gave you a shot. They give you a shot in your back at the injection site to kind of numb it because I can only imagine this needle being. I've seen it when they did it to Jenna. Some but... bitch is pretty long, yeah. And then, like, they got to fish around in there. I think they can screw a lot of stuff up if it don't go right. I think so, too, which is really wild. So they're in there fishing around for it, and, like, I feel it on my – I felt it on my – and I'm like, oh. She's like, what, 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 what? And I was like, well, I can feel it on my right side. And she's like, well, does it go down your leg? And I'm like, no, just in my right, like on the right side. She said, okay, hold on. And then she started, oh, you can feel it on my left now. And she's like, is it in your leg? I'm like, No. Well, then I, she said, what about now? And I said, no, I can't feel nothing. She said, okay, I got it. Don't move. And I'm like, oh, God, don't put that pressure on me. Because I'm sitting here by that point yeah. for quite some time. They had to give me more shit to help me loosen up because I was tensing up, you know, whatever, if you could imagine. And, boy, I want to tell you something. When that son of a bitch hit it and it got in there and she pushed that drug, and, like, when you literally go – numb from the waist down like that is a wild deal dude like i felt as close to you think you could have walked no not a, no not a chance <laughs> like i felt as close to christopher Did you feel Reeves, like, like trying to walk no i couldn't my leg i was hanging my legs off the table i would have tried to get up and i had to like david i would have ate shit on the floor like i would have been knocked out not only am i super loopy on ketamine and all the other stuff that they give me, fentanyl and all kinds of goodies. And then, like, I'm, my legs are hanging off the table, and then they go completely dark. They're done. Numb. See, I couldn't handle it. And they had to. a panic attack. They, that's why they give. No, you wouldn't have. That's why they give you the Versed. Well, knowing you can't run away, what if the SOBs try to, like. Well, you're done. You're harvest your organs. It's over. No. Nope. 
That's why they give you the verse set. You wouldn't give a damn if they cut your left ball out at that point. I don't know if I could handle it. <laughs> you could, because that's what the drugs are for. So then they get you up, on, and then they like literally physically had to lift my legs up onto the table for me. And then I had to help them like shimmy my ass back up on the table. And then like after that, like I can remember the doctor coming in and like getting ready to start hacking. And then she's like, okay, I'm getting, we're going to, you're getting ready to go to sleep. You're going to go to night, night. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And I don't remember nothing. And then I woke up in the OR. I've never woken up from a surgery in the OR. Like I've like always still working on you. No, like he was done. They were wrapping things up, but like I was awake. Like I woke up, looked down at my feet and gave the doctor the peace sign while he was like finishing wrapping my foot. Well, that's but, what, but they did it by design. That's why they do it. That's why they do the epidural so they don't have to put people far under. Exactly. And it's not a big as and risk. You, yeah. Surgical and you wise. don't wait. Cause like I, like with my laryngitis, like how my throat and I was so hoarse and I had that kind of scratchy little cough and all that shit. That's why the uh, anesthesiology team was like, why don't we just do the spinal <clears throat> and, and we'll put you to sleep to where you don't have to, um, we don't have to put a tube down your throat. So like the, it, she goes, your throat's already pissed off. If we put a tube down your throat, it's just going to be more pissed off. So why don't we try to do it this way? And I was like, yeah, whatever. And they're like, well, it's, it's your decision. And I'm like, I'm not a doctor. Like, why do you make me make these decisions? So I looked over at the warden and she's like, yeah, do it. You're fine. I was like, okay, yep, yeah, I'll do it. You know? Well, see, but that's how like all those knee replacement, hip replacements. Yeah. That's why those have all become same day procedures. Say my mom. Because they don't put them down all the way. My mom's hip, she did it. Like, that's what she said. She said, but she felt like she's about to fall off the table. And they were like, oh boy, she's getting ready to go. You know, so she, uh, she told me that story was pretty funny. Now. When I got into the recovery room, they called the pack you like you come out, you go into there. I couldn't talk because I was so dry mouth. So I'm whispering to this poor girl. I do believe her name was Bridget. Oh, that nurse. sounds like heaven, Dave. Yeah, she was. I was whispering to her. I was like, hi, what's your name? She's like, Bridget. I'm like, hello, Bridget. You know, and but some other woman that was coming into the pack you from surgery wasn't as lucky as me. She must have been full on put out because I think she had a a girl part removal procedure done. Hysterectomy? Yeah, because I think she kept asking the lady. Did you not know what? No, you clue. just didn't want to say it. Well, no, I just yeah, but I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, but the woman was like, she asked her recovery nurse minimum nine times if they got it all out and if they got it done laparoscopically, and she said, "Yep, it's all gone." laparoscopically at least nine times this woman asked the same question and she said oh yeah you had a birthday today and she said yep it's my birthday and i got the best birthday present ever no more periods <laughs> <laughs> and i'm sitting across from this old gal you know this gal in the in the oh in the recovery room and i the girl that's doing me my intake or my stuff post-op shit she's She's laughing, shaking her head at me, and I was like, oh, "I guess you know, big day." You know, <laughs> it was just kind of funny. I could only imagine what them, them people in the out of all the room. units. Like I know your wife's on the labor dis- deliver the de- labor delivery delivery side. There, there it smoke. is. Here it is. And then your wife was kind of ER women's hospital OBED. Yeah, I just think that you're if you're one of those nurses that works like those PACUs. Some of them, they get pretty wild coming off the anesthesia. That's usually me. And it just, I don't know how you handle it. Cause I don't wake up. I usually don't wake up really easy. I usually get <laughs> real horny. Like, for some reason, like, the first time I had a surgery, <laughs> I was in the PACU. Uh, I think it was Hey, over. does this wake up come with the uh, I said that. She, I said, hey, she goes, can I get you anything? I said, a Diet Coke and your phone number. And Justine's <laughs> literally sitting right next to me. And she's like, God, you asshat, I'm right here. You know, and, like, I just get real flirty, and uh, it's funnier than hell. But I told the doc this last time that the last time I went under for one of my, I think it was my last knee surgery. Like when I come out, I was shaking so bad 
that I thought the gurney was going to break. Like I, I was, sh- I mean, I was shaking. I've never seen that. I've never felt that before in my life. Uncontrollable, like convulsion shivers. And I was explaining that to a member of the anesthesia team this time. And she said, how old were you? And I was like, I don't know. It was 2014. So I was in my twenties, I guess. 10 year, 26. <laughs> yeah. So I was that age. And she said, uh, that's because you were a 20 year old white male. And that's what happens to 20 year old white males when they have extensive surgeries like that with anesthesia. That's one of the common, uh, side effects of recovery when you're coming off of the, whatever the big boy drugs they use you for use for that kind of like I was out that time for hours. Like they were rebuilding my leg Yeah, and she said, Oh yeah, it happens all the time. And I was like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> I didn't like that, you know, but yeah, they told me to bring my CPAP. Like I usually bring my CPAP with me for the pack you and all that stuff. Didn't need it because they said, yeah, your, your sats were like 97, 99 the whole time on room air when you were coming out and all that stuff. Stellar experience. Um, shout out to our friends over at uh, the Memorial Healthcare Center. Their um, their surgery team over there. Pretty cool. Seeing a lot of familiar faces over there. Know a lot of those ladies over there on the on that floor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's about the second one I've had. Over at Jasper, I had that. I had a tongue nodule. I'd have surgery on my tongue that one time. I'd have a. Uh, What's the chance we can get back to that someday? <laughs> ruptured, uh, ruptured hydration nodule removed off my tongue. So that was that. And I think actually, uh, friend of the program, maybe friend of the program. I don't know. Ben Werney. He was on. He's a he's an OR nurse. He was in there. Ran into uh, Tyler, another uh, Dutchman runner. Tyler. Oh old, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, Nelson neighbor boy here. He was over there. He came. He specific. He was in another. Uh, I think actually he was in Doc Blessinger's rooms that morning doing a couple surgeries with him, but he made it a point to come over and say hi. So he said, I saw your name on the surgery list, so I figured I'd stop in and say hey. You know, so I don't know. I think it's really cool just yeah, having, yeah. you know, seeing familiar faces and shit like that over there. So. Unless you're standing there on the backside of your well, uh, surgical gown. That's exactly what another friend of the program, another one of my friends, is getting ready to go in to have surgery. And his sister in law is one of the intake nurses in the surgery. And she's like, I don't, I don't want nothing to do with that, you know, because like I said earlier, I did piss my pants in surgery because they say it's very common. Like, that's just what they told you. Before. Well, yeah, no. It, I, <laughs> they tell you that to make you feel okay about yourself. You know, yourself. the funny thing is, is I had no clue that I had done it until I got back into my other room to where I started to think about, like, with that epidural, they said you have to walk and pee before you can leave. Yeah. So you have to wait like an hour and 40, hour and 50 minutes, to get, you know, whatever it takes for that fully to come off. And I was like, well, okay. So I started... You know, just feeling around down there to see if I can still, you know, feel my unit, basically. <laughs> and uh, I was like, God damn, or gosh darn, it's all wet. Like, what the hell? And then I took my gown. I'm like, oh, it's pee. <laughs> and I told you, I leaned over. I told Justine, I said, I think I pissed myself. She goes, no way. It's probably just sweat or something. I'm like, sweat? <laughs> like, I'm soaking ass wet. Smell this. She goes, I'm not smelling your gown. No. Well, then the nurse came in. And she's like, I guess she could hear us bickering back and forth. And she must have just been outside. So she popped in. She's like, hey, can I help you or something? I said, I think I pissed myself. And she goes, oh, did you have a spinal? I'm like, yeah. And she goes, oh, it's normal. Happens all the time. And I said, well, okay, uh, but I think I have to go. She said, well, you got one down. You've already went pee, so now we just got to make sure you can walk. And I'm <laughs> like, well, don't you need to make sure I can, like, pee and control it before I go? <laughs> so they were like, yeah, well, let's – and I said, well, I could probably go again. So she's, <laughs> she's like, well, let's get you out of your pee pants <laughs> before pee you pants. go to the, to the uh, bathroom. So then uh, – that poor girl and my wife had to wrangle a pair of uh, saturated Duluths off of my uh, <laughs> crippled ass uh, in that room. And then oh, 
<laughs> reinstall a pair of uh, athletic shorts that I had wore there, commando, <laughs> for me to then hobble with a walker to the bathroom to take a piss that little did I know. Well, I'm lucky that I only peed what I peed in surgery because had I peed the amount that I peed after surgery, while in surgery, it would have probably people have probably been slipping and falling and busting <laughs> their ass because like Justine looked at me and she's like, "God dang, it, it's never going to stop!" Like I peed a bunch after I was all done, but yeah, it was a it was actually a pretty good experience. But now I'm into the stage of the pain, and you know they they put this uh, pain pump unit. I got this little this little thing. You get to keep that fanny pack. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, after the after the ball's empty, I just throw everything else away, and that fanny pack's mine to keep. So. Nice. Yeah, when Dad had his knee replaced, that's they put those on there. That's and, pretty wild, really, to think about because it's just <laughs> it's just a it's a catheter implanted square into my leg. And then he said, like when I go, she said that whenever I go to pull it out, it just feels like you know. She said she went like this. It's like, real, like yeah, I think. Uh, Pop Frank. It's like fishing string. Yeah, Papa Frank pulled his out on his own. Yeah. When there's he had no, his she done. said there's no stitches holding it in. There's no glue, nothing. tape, nothing. It's just in there. Well, and that's what uh, somebody that had their knee replaced prior, it's around the same time Pop Frank did, they woke up from surgery a little wild and they pulled theirs out. See, that's why. And they can't put it back yeah, in. That's like it's Because they said that's the one thing you don't want to do is snag it. and pull that out. Yeah. Because that'll so create that's more why problems. I was sleeping in the recliner. Dave came to pick me up because I was bored earlier, and he was out and about. And I said, hey, you know, he come in, and he's like, God damn, you sleeping in this recliner? And I'm like, yeah, because I'm, I'm paranoid that I'm going to roll over. Like tape it to your leg. I well, thought. it is. Oh. It's taped. It's taped. It's but... taped a bunch, you know, and then they got another couple things coiled in there to where if you did snag it, it would – you got a little leeway. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I just – Paranoid. Don't want to chance yeah, it. Yeah. Sure. That is the biggest concern of mine about aging or getting older. And probably why I want to try to get in shape is just a mass to try to get, you know, like your situation oh, there. A pain in the butt, man. Like to help you to get to just to piss or get around and it's do whatever pain. you need to do. Yeah. Like it's just, it's a wild, I'm gonna, wild I, thought. I'm going to ask for a bag pretty early on. Like a pee bag, mm. you know what I mean? Or like a bedside commode or something, you know? Like if it, if, if like getting up and walking becomes a chore, just go ahead and I'll just catheter myself every couple hours, you know? Yeah. I know I, I joke about that, but I know a guy that has to do that, and I, that's terrible. I mean, it, kudos to you, man. That's tough. It is a tough spot. That is a tough spot. I don't know. I just wanted to talk a little bit about my a little bit about my surgery. I've been, I'll be off for about four weeks and watching a lot of TV and, uh, well, I'm glad you no, got no op- you've been no, in pretty bad shape. No bad. opioids. Yeah, that's good. Absolutely. That is good. No opioids. I'm just uh, straight Tylenol and ibuprofen and whatever the shit it is in this bag, but it, it just, that just affects my foot. It's a non, that's non narcotic. Yeah. Um, so being a small business, people forget, there's a business behind us, Dave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like there's a business that owns and operates this little thing. Yeah, we're we just got bonds. Yeah, we just are. You know, the or- overlords that own that LLC, um, you know, we just work for them. But we got our taxes done for this side of the business. We're, we're in tax season. Yeah. Yep, yep, we're here. Uh, we're in tax season and we all know it. And, uh, you know, we're very fortunate because of viewers and fans that our little side hustle made a little cash brought to you from viewers like you. Yeah. And it's not changing us. You know, we're, we haven't changed. We're still the same old, same old, same old. But when I was driving back and I was looking at what it, you know, preparation of taxes for this, what do you guys think our founding fathers would say about the current state of taxation in this country? A bunch of whiskey drinkers went up in arms over tea tax. That motherfucker didn't drink tea. (laughs) What'd they do with it? They threw it in the harbor. They threw it in the daggum water. But that's what. But that's what I'm saying. So, like, I started to think about it, and you see this uh, come out around election season, uh, especially on a national or state stage, and you look at how many taxes that you pay. 
There's a, you know, the taxes we all think about a lot, property tax. If you own taxes here in the county, which the sticker shock of property taxes in this county last year was enough to send a lot of people almost probably up in arms with pitchforks because I know there was a lot of folks that their property tax was quite steep. Um, Mine was. You look at... Ours went up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when new neighbor comes down the road, yeah. ours is going up again. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you got well, property. Well, no, that was affected now, wasn't it? No. Once would, they build and be, assess the value of that new home they built on that lot. Well, I mean, the, the, just with the title transfer now, it went up. Yeah, and it's going to go up more. Yeah, when they when they build and reassess, it'll go up more. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, our we got we already got hit once with the, with the title transfer in this first installment. Yeah. And then we'll get hit again. Oh, yeah. Whenever they get done building. So we got property taxes, Dave. <sighs> you got uh, <laughs> sales tax on things. You buy, if you're a cigarette smoker, you got cigarette taxes, mm -hmm. alcohol taxes, I would, taxes I would on your gas. I would challenge you to find something that's not taxed. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so you start to think about. You buy a vehicle, sales tax. Yeah. On the money that you got taxed because somebody paid it to you. <laughs> then once you get the vehicle, you got to pay your goddamn excise tax to be able to drive the motherfucker on the road that the gas tax ain't even fixing that it says it's going to fix. So, and then you go and you give money to the schools for some other bullshit, but they're already taking those taxes out of your goddamn income. Taxes. See, what, this is what I'm saying. Like with this testosterone <laughs> stuff, like we're gonna have to get a, Dave's gonna be. We're gonna have to get a bigger table. Yeah, we're have to, Dave is gonna roid it out. Taxation without representation. That was what the key first American. But colonist. that's why they want so many folks thinking they're disabled and can't take care of themselves because it takes that voting base. For everybody to keep wanting to be on the tit of big government. Is that right? Oh, no. big government's a big problem. Yeah. There's no doubt. So the Constitution, although the Founding oh. Fathers, the Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 1, gives Congress the power to impose taxes and other levies on the general public. It wasn't till the Civil War in which they created the Office of the Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Now, yeah. back then, the Civil War income tax was levied to pay for mm -hmm. the Union in the Civil War, which was 3% of all incomes over, I think it was 600 bucks. So it was a flat tax back then. But where we really got bamboozled, there was some... Bamboozled. Well, there was a case by the it. Supreme Court. That's, like, that's another one of them fun words to say. Bamboozled. There Bungalow. was a case... Uh, in front of the Supreme Court, Pergola. and I'm pulling it up. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Rowad. So there was a case. What is it? It was called uh, Pollock versus Farmers Loan and Trust Company. Taxes on rent from real estate or on interest income from personal property and other income were direct tax on property. Since the portion of income tax is impractical, the Pollock's ruling had the effect of prohibiting a federal tax on income from the property due to the political difficulties of taxing individual wages without taxing income from property. Federal income tax was impractical because of Pollock. So our politicians way back then decided that we're going to push through the 16th Amendment, which allows Congress to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived without apportionment among the several states and without regard to any census or enumeration. Do you ever charge a uh, dad tax mm -hmm. for things? Just so my kids know that nothing in life is fair, and no matter what they think they have, somebody else has got claim to it. Yeah. That's the American dream for you right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so Just slam it in your ass! <laughs> I, I think so you really like up. this this topic. I do not like it. Like, I don't know. It's, it's a far stretch. I used to think I was like the great, uh, like the biggest uh, pro-American person. I'm very patriotic, but I I don't think America today is what the forefathers envisioned. Oh, not a chance. And uh, we've no really way. just gone to shit in a handbasket with a bunch of hey. snivelly-nosed little bitches all over the place that can't take care of themselves. Oh, God, I get fired up, guys. <laughs> We're going to revisit this topic when dave gets at on least his two or three more therapy. times here's the, here's the problem i've got is the problem that i think kills me the most about taxes like 
is people don't understand the history lesson behind it and what causes it. Well, it's nothing and new. How you can, but people don't know that about stuff when it comes to government and economics and the basic knowledge. Like it's easy to control and manipulate when you're a dumb population of with people no, with no arms. Yeah, that's exactly right. Like that's the that's the problem with all this. So you think about. We For made a it non political podcast. We did, yeah, but it's <laughs> in 1862. It's, President Lincoln signed into law a revenue raising measure to help pay for Civil War expenses. Yeah, yeah. which is then that's where percent tax on six hundred ten thousand. And I'm sure right politicians so. sold it back then. Of you know, well, when we get into these wars, we got to be able to pay them, so let's levy taxes. Well, you know, if you but can now do it's that out of control. control it, I'm all for it. There is. There is absolutely reasons where uh, 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 a people should have to put in for that to protect what the, is in the best interest of the people. Yeah. Uh, you know, remember all the daggone, uh, the scrap steel drives and stuff. And yeah. World War, uh, Rationing. Yeah. Shit. I mean, there's a, there's a time and a place, but you can't just keep it pulling on out to send however many billions of dollars to Ukraine. Yeah, and, that's wild. They talked about the tax man in Bible times too. Right? Yeah, tax collectors you had to pay the tax collector back then. I just I think the only thing I wish is that you when it came to paying taxes, first off, everybody should be a small business owner. If you own a small business and you're paying a quarterly payment. So when I was in private practice, I paid a quarterly payment to the IRS. Cuz you pay your quarterly, so at the end of the year you don't all of a sudden, hey, you owe the federal government $75,000 for making... Yikes. Oh, it's... There was, some, like, towards the end, like, my quarterly payments, it was... Uh, I would have probably 30 or 40 grand by the end of the year paid into quarterly payments. Sheesh. And that's writing a check out of your... Che like, that's why you truly want to learn and know your disdain for the IRS, go into a small business for yourself. Like it is unbelievable how just infuriating it is. But the problem of it is like the tax code, if you looked at the tax code, that is, I mean, two miles thick and you could simplify 95% of it. Yeah. The tax, like people get mad about the rich and wealthy and what they do. Well, guess who pay the rich and wealthy to pass the laws that do these things? So you want to be mad at somebody that goes and spends a bunch of money to save a bunch of money. Well, they're just finding loopholes in those tax codes. Like, it's it's fair game. Sure. You know what I mean? But for most of us, are you going to go hire a tax attorney for your – like, it's not. Yeah. And a lot of the people around here that get these big, you know, checks back, they don't realize – that's your own money. Yeah. The You're, federal government's not giving you money. That's your <laughs> own money that you weren't able to spend throughout the year. How many people did you know? How many people that have you known in the past that actually did like a, uh, it's, what, it's not a, is it a 1099? What, what is it where you have more money deducted throughout the year to where you get a bigger tax return? What's that called? It's just the way you've set up your taxes. It's so like, like was, a withholding, an yeah, income withholding. Some, some, some people that I know would do that like they would file they would write their taxes up to where they would take more you know each pay period to where they would get like i mean they'd get like ten, fifteen thousand dollars back and i'm like that's the dumbest thing that you're using the government as a savings account that's the stupidest Not a thing savings account a holding account yeah like yeah. that's the dumbest thing i've ever that's stupid you know why would you do that yeah i just i don't know that just is me but well that's yeah I've always, I'm I ignorant. was always told when I first started my business, you either want to own, owe no money or pay just a little bit in. For sure. And that's where you want to live or yeah. where you want to be. You want to pay tax. Like that's the whole big deal. Yeah. Like you want to pay. But tax. not that much tax. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, because after we did it today, I was like, you know, and you hear the horror stories mm -hmm. about people with taxes and people don't understand that, like that's your own money. Like to your point, you're using it as a holding account. But it's just, if you got something for it, if our, because this, well, you say we don't get how into do politics. People, but how do people screw up and like have to pay boatloads of money in every time? Like, how does that work? Because like for us one year, or well, last yeah, year. Yeah, I remember you saying this too. Well, last year, we, for some reason with the resort, we didn't take it, we didn't check the right box 
for withholding more of federal. So we got like 60 bucks from the state of Indiana back, which is fine. That's that's good. I mean, we didn't pay too much in and we didn't vice versa. But on federal, we got slapped bad. And it was like Yeah, like I know people that have to pay in like six, seven, eight thousand dollars to this to because the, they don't they don't check the right boxes on yeah. what they're like how, withholding. Like how I mean, as an HR person or whoever sets that up for you at your employer, like how the hell do you let that happen? They don't dip those toes in those waters because people do different things. Yeah. Are you claiming as a head of household? Are you claiming as this? Are you doing this? Yeah. How many dependents are you claiming? See, I guess there's where we get into that whole two mile thick tax code book about yeah. like all these different options. I get I don't know, I guess which you couldn't just make it blanketly like here's where you're at. This is what you do. Oh, you could. I think you could. You no, I mean like in uniformity throughout the entire country. Like you couldn't just blanketly say, "Hey, your tax, your tax rate is going to be the same as this guy's tax rate," and here's how it's going to shake. Well, out. you hear politicians sometimes campaign on everybody paying a flat tax because now what you have is you have brackets that you fall within, and I don't yeah. know what the marginal because, income brackets are. Yeah. But, you know, you have the capital gains. You got uh, capital gains taxes. So all that stuff and this whole tax this tax com- conversation that we're having, like I'm just – it's just another thing that I'm totally ignorant about. I've always just taken my shit from I get from my employer, drive them to a tax prep guy, hand them over, pay my 200 bucks, go back and get my return, and then I'm done. Like I've never – tried to file a long form i've never looked into you know anything and i i i mean i i don't know like i just i've never yeah i've never really had that much of a complicated tax return i guess well and that's probably <laughs> i mean that's probably about right most like people how, wouldn't the thing i don't understand is like your tax prep which you know like like how people that so I've heard of people paying like five, six hundred bucks to have their taxes prepared. Like from a, like can you do that shit on TurboTax like for free? You can, but you can dick it up just as much as you can do it right. If right. You're paying attention. <laughs> My younger brother, he went through H and R Block one time, and they had him getting back like six, seven grand. <laughs> and oh, he yeah. brought his stuff home and told mom and dad. Mom and dad kind of started looking through it like. You don't have a kid. Like, oh, you don't God. have something like it. And <laughs> so they took it. They took it up here to a local shop, and they're like, uh, "Yeah, you know." Have you ever been audited? This stuff? No, I have. Justine and I have. We got audited, and turns out we got hung too because we had to pay back. Like there again, the guy that we paid our money to do our taxes. He should have covered that. If he didn't, wrong. he should have. No, he didn't, and we had to pay it back. It was like a couple hundred bucks. Was this recent? No. No, it was not recent, no. Mm-mm. I mean, we're, we've only been married, you know, however many years. So, I mean, that wasn't like a decade ago, but. Yeah. Well, I mean, had we talked about it, that's what I'm saying. Uh, you and I talked about it. Well, we talked about it. So we had or another a, issue. We had an issue. This is the second issue. Uh, we had two issues. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. I just. But the first one, the first issue was the reason why we didn't use that particular place anymore gotcha and then we <laughs> then we decided to maybe give it another shot and we went back and had another issue another issue yeah. Yeah, that's probably but now we don't do that anymore but i just like i'm not anti like paint like i get it it's just when you look at yeah but if you want to use money to fix your roads if you want to use money to improve your sidewalks if you want to use money to I mean, I I can get down on those type of taxes. Schools. Right? I mean, there's plenty of reasons for taxes. Right. I mean, is that that's what it's, you're? Trying yeah, that's to say. what I'm saying. Yeah. But I have a problem with where the extent of where our tax dollars go to other things that we have no bit. Like you brought up Ukraine. Like I'm sure there's a whole geopolitical argument oh, that could occur gosh. about this, and we're not going to dip our toes in that water. Well, there was a uh, locally there was a place near here. That recently passed, and it was voted by the 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 residents of there to pass a food and beverage tax for a new recreation. Oh, pool that's and right, yeah. And everybody's all excited. So now, anytime you go to any place in this town for a restaurant or whatever, you're paying an extra couple percent, I think, of a tax to cover the cost of this recreation center. And everybody's all happy about it. And then come to find out the place they're going to stick it, they couldn't put it. 
Yeah. So now they've just now recently gotten this to where they found another place, but it's like, good grief. How long is it going to take now? Because they, they had all that figured out to be able to move forward with proposing for this tax to pay for it because it was all quoted. So they passed the tax. And then oh, pass the tax well, before you have everything ready to go. We forgot about this, so they have had to find a new place now, and that's the kind of stuff that fires you up. Because now, how long does this tax have to be there? Because well, we've already started, we can't stop. You know. Well, so. and you never. The other problem of it is, is you never see taxes come off the books. Nope. nope. So that that food and beverage tax. Like, what? <laughs> so here's something my mom was saying something today. Have you heard or seen on TikTok? People are talking about like this surge. Like this surge? About Wendy's. Is that what it is? Uber does it. So Uber, dur- <laughs> during busy hours, charges more because it's a supply and demand situation. Yeah. yeah. So Wendy's now is going to try to change their menu pricing during the surge hours due to supply and demand. So you'll the, the theory was that they would charge more when there was more people and they were busier. Yeah, not a tax though. It is it only one? Is it only Wendy's franchises that are doing it? Yeah, well, it wasn't something. Well, I think it's going to be a problem because you're going to raise taxes. You're going to raise not taxes. You're going to raise the price when people are there for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So between noon and people just won't go there. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. Like you're going to price yourself out. Yeah, and I feel like they're almost there now. Like it is pretty damn close. Insane man. Yeah. Pretty damn close. Old Dave Thomas rolling in his graves. So. Oh, I know. Yeah, dude. very true. But I don't know. I just, I'm not, I get it. I just feel like. You got to have taxes for government to run. I have an issue with the way that we're taxed and there's no end to the tax. And I have a way with the, how the politicians just don't give a damn about what Cause they've got middle the America the pays. Because they tax lawyers. Yeah. Or they just commit insider trading. Yeah, that's true. And make plenty of money. You shouldn't make one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year in one of the largest metropolitan areas where it's not cheap to live, and leave that job and be worth millions more than what you were when you went in. Yeah, I don't know. I just wonder if there's enough common folk that could ever get behind some kind of movement where you clean up a lot of that shit. That's the question. I'm Dave. trying to get off my. Uh high horse but i don't think so that's why we've been pushing so many people that they've got issues and problems that they can't solve on their own yeah oh yeah dave (laughs) (laughs) what do you got buddy oh bring us home tap water anymore yes 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 yep you getting off the tap no 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 no. i still drink tap water now i do notice more uh like we've got a spigot on the refrigerator. Spigot. That's um, another one of them fun words. And it's filtered, <laughs> so it's not just tap water. Uh, but it's colder, so I prefer that if I'm at a glass situation. So is your question focused on you walking over to the sink, you pulling that lever? Or what about drinking out of the garden hose type of thing? I feel like people just don't drink sink water much. You remember back in school when you yeah. go to the sink and, and do the old... Yeah. Uh, out of those lead pipes, yeah. Uh, we, I, I get it out of the fridge because we have an extra filter on the fridge. That that's where I go. Mm-hmm. Um, not that we have poor water quality in our area. We have stellar water quality. quality yeah. in our yeah, area. we do. What do you have for water? St. Henry, as do I. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got great. Water. So we have great water, and they release those reports every year, and they seem to be doing a great job. Uh, kudos to them. Shout out, probably big fans of the show. Uh, but I will go, I just take that extra level of filtration through the fridge, and that's where I'll always get it. My wife is ruthless. She will just, wherever, like bathroom sink, she'll go fill up her Love that. water. Like you, she just. Her and I are on the same water wavelength. Justine will literally. So these big ass Stanley cups that yeah. won't even fit in the. Won't even fit in the damn water refrigerator tray thing, tray unit thing, and the fridge. And she'll sit there and let that son of a bitch piss in that cup for an hour. Yeah, I mean it's just you know barely dribbling out. You know it's been like, what are you doing? Like you are wasting so much time by standing at that refrigerator waiting for all fifty ounces <laughs> to come and fill your cup up. When all you had to do is sprinkle two or three ice cubes in there, because she's a very light ice gal. Oh, yeah. It's hard on her teeth. You know, she's not a real big ice gal. 
And then, you know, I said, well, it's, it's winter time. Okay. The ground ambient temperature is around 56 degrees. Plus when the water comes up out of the ground and comes into our crawl space, which is obviously not insulated, you know, it's supposed to be able to breathe. It's cold in there. The water that's coming out of the tap is cold already. Yeah. You know, so you, oh, yeah. so that whole argument about, well, I like it out of the fridge because it's cold when it comes out. Well, it's actually colder when it comes out of the tap than it would if it was coming right to the now. fridge. Yes. Right now. You know, I it just burns me up how she stands there. And the kids are just as brainwashed as what she is. And they're standing <laughs> there filling up their six-gallon Yeti Stanley cups, going to <laughs> freaking baseball and all this shit. And I'm like, I ain't got time to wait on your shit. Fill the damn thing up in the sink and let's roll. You know, so, but... Do you have a whole a whole home filtration? We did when we first moved in there, and the son of a bitch leaked, unbeknownst to the the previous previous owners. And there was a nice uh, stand of black mold growing on the backs of the rotted out cabinets that we had to destroy mm. because of that issue. Ooh. So no, we eliminated it promptly. Do you have a whole home filter? I don't think so. We we do. We have one that's just like sediment and all that other stuff. Like it's not like a fancy. Yeah. We just have that old. You get those filters at mm. wherever, and it's probably yeah. more for sediment and other things like that. But, one thing yeah. I will say that most people are turned off by tap water is the fluoride. In 1962, the United States Public Health Service recommended that public water supplies should contain between 0.7 and 1.2 mg of fluoride to help prevent tooth decay. This recommendation was updated in 2015 to a level of 0.07 maximum. So if you read a lot of the... um, Back pages of the internet. Yeah, foil hat clubs and all that stuff. They say that fluoride could be another big uh, contributor to, like, childhood autism and, like, all kinds of other... Some say it some calcifies anti, some, your... Some uh, anti-fluoriders out there that don't like it, even though you, you go to the dentist and they give it to you. I mean, well, it's an option, but... Some people a, don't. A lot of people use fluoride-free toothpaste. Yeah. Uh, I could be way off base here. Because I'm new to the community, relatively 15 years, you know, 14. Like this community or like the conspiracy theory no, community? No, no, no. no, no. Um, okay. Southwestern Indiana. Okay. So I feel like even in the rural areas, everybody's on city water. Rural. Now rural. back home, once you got out of town, everybody just has well water. Well water. Well water used to rot teeth. See, and that's what I'm wondering. I don't know. I remember talking to my grandpa about it, and he said, well, it's probably the water table. It's probably just not good water here. That's why if everybody's on city water, because they wouldn't run it out to all these places if yeah. there was water to be had. Mm-hmm. Well, we have that big, beautiful Potoka Lake up there. So where do you guys stand? So you probably haven't had a whole lot of well water. No. My brother, that's my brother's house was. Gosh, I love well water. Drinking? Oh, yeah. It stinks. Yeah, but I like it. There's a taste to it. Oh, good grief. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So no, my brother would do laundry. He, he So he had a water softener. Because yeah. it, well it's hard. Water. Well water is hard water. Yeah. So he'd have a water softener, and then that would run his uh, wash machine. Yeah. And I do believe, I don't know if it'd go to his hot water heater or not. Maybe it would. And then, but he always drank bottled water or jug water. Like, he didn't drink the well water. I when I go think. back home, I do enjoy drinking well water right out there. I just think with the toxins and the pollution in the world. Their house had... Uh, Cistern. Their Illinois house had uh, some sort of funky ass water that when you took a shower, it took six hours to get your soap rinsed off because it made you feel all slimy. Is oh, that, yeah, yeah. That's hard water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you feel it kind of greasy. Yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah, but they say it's actually good for your skin. Some people do. Now, there's there's places in Huntingburg, like north of town, that don't have water, that are on well, well waters and stuff like that. And then there was a friend of mine my mom's that like that she's been taking her clothes to the laundromat for 30 years because they don't want to wash you're not supposed to wash your clothes with hard water oh why is that i don't know i don't know anything oh. about it i don't know i just we we drink a lot of we try to drink a lot of water 
Um, yeah, I drink it straight out of the sink. At the resort, we get uh, five gallon jugs brought in. That's what we've we got. We got one of who? those in the house now too. From Jenna who? got one. Huh? Who do you get yours from? Colligan. I don't yeah, know who it is. Yeah. It may be. There's a friend. There's a friend of mine that owns a water company. I know. Used to be a neighbor of mine. Prestine Water. Yeah. Oh, my damn. Anyway, I was. My boys went through and they were filling their jugs in the sink, and then uh, we got a new hose. And I was like, "Oh man, I'm gonna have to break that puppy in." Somewhere. As a child, I always drank water out of the water hose. Oh, there was nothing more refreshing on yeah. that day when it's hotter than shit, and you let that get all over your face. You let that come, you let that water that's been Brumsky. letting the uh, <laughs> Brumsky. You let the water that's been in the hose get out because it's, it's hot. Hotter than the fire of a thousand suns. But then yeah. once that cold water starts coming out, then, yeah, you're all good. But I did know, I did learn something that, don't know if it's factually accurate or not, but um, we could Google it later. But they say you're not supposed to drink hose water out of bacteria a, out of a black hose. Have you ever heard that? Well, that's because, that's why, like, a lot of campers, those hoses are white. Is that right? Yes. I think it's because they collect more heat and allow the bacteria to grow and are more. Hmm. I don't know. I just, I always heard that too. I, I mean, I always, it never stopped me. Oh, yeah. I'd, well, when you flush it through that cold, that flushes all that stuff yeah. out of there anyways. Yeah, it's no problem. That's no problem as at all. As long as you're not licking the inside of the hole. Or something, <laughs> uh, wow. Probably yeah. Be fun. That's a tough spot. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. That's wild. That's do, just, you, do you drink, uh, here's one for you. Do you drink uh, rainwater? I don't collect rainwater to have the opportunity to drink it. My dad's truck barely gets drove. Driven. Yeah, yeah. They always drive the Jeep or they drive the van, and it's always clean, mm-hmm. sits in the driveway, doesn't. Just doesn't drive it much, or maybe he does. I fuck, I don't know. He just keeps it clean. His truck was like dirty, dirty, hella dirty, and it. And he said, "Yeah, you see that? That's from that dirty rain we had the other night." And I thought, "What are you talking about, old man?" He said, "Dirt." Wayne Hart said that that <laughs> storm that came through, that the the storm of epic proportion that fiddled out before it got here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God, right? You know, nobody wants tornadoes or nothing, but uh he said it picked up a lot of dirt and dust and shit when it come through Oklahoma and then them plains states and then like dumped it back out. It could, I mean, it was dirty. Like his truck was like you could tell where it looked like he had been driving down a gravel road. And then got it wet. Like right. it, it was, as, I don't know. I think that's wild. So yeah, I probably no. wouldn't drink water, rainwater, no. I mean, I know I've like, as a kid, would like yeah. catch oh, rainwater. Like a baby bird. Or uh, wring your shirt out into your, your mouth. That's you know? disgusting. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm all in on. Uh, Not like sweat. Oh, okay. Like the rainwater. Oh, yeah. yeah. Imagine her sweat in there. Yeah, I'm out. Uh, salty. Sit on that there, you know. Okay. Give you a little electrolytes. <sighs> hey, anything else on uh, tap water there, nope, Dave? Nope, that's all I got. All right, there we go. On tap. Oh, God. Hey, unfortunately, fellas, we have no Dear Dutchman or Random Wander this week. Uh-oh. Uh, send them in to us if you got them. Probably ought to do a better job of requesting them. But uh, none in on the chamber there. But we can get into some Merkley & Sons Choice Cut Questions of the Week for the fellas. There we Hell go. yeah. Brought to you by Merkley & Sons. Welcome to Merkley & Sons Choice Cuts Question of the Week for the Fellas, sponsored by Merkley & Sons, the ultimate destination for meat enthusiasts. As we gear up for the upcoming baseball season, there's something missing from the ballpark experience that's got us longing for the good old days. Picture this, the crack of the bat, the roar of the crowd, and the scent of sizzling meat wafting through the air. It's a scene straight out of a baseball lover's dreams, but amidst some excitement, there's one thing that truly completes the experience. A seasoned Merkley patty on a bun. Yeah, you heard it right. Nothing quite hits the spot like sinking your teeth into a juicy, flavorful Merkley patty, expertly seasoned to perfection. It's the epitome of ballpark bliss. All right, here we go. Here we go. We got some great questions. 
I tell you what, we're just going to allow him. Um, our buddy Quirky Schmidt just keeps mm. sending. Hell yeah, man. And uh, we're going to keep going on. Uh, uh, you know, he can send them in every week and I'll read them. So him and Braddo, they could become yeah. just fixtures of the show. Uh, first question, he said uh, he must have been catching up. Amazing interview with our buddy John Songer. Uh, big th- shout out and thanks to John Songer there at the Gaslight because uh, we enjoy the Gaslight in and of itself. But uh, John's a friend of the program and uh, we love working with John. Wendy's or Arby's? Arby's. Arby's. Mm. Them JBCs are tough to beat, but those JBCs and them spicy chickens. I don't know though that beef and chad. Mm. Yeah, I'd say it's a toss up, but when in Rome, probably Wendy's. There you go. But Arby's, when Arby's first came to Fert, well, we just tw- anyways. Johnny Cash or Willie Nelson? <clears throat> Johnny Cash. Willie Nelson. Ooh, explain, Dave. Uh, Johnny Cash is. He loves a bigger, how he sings. With his well, fingers. no, Johnny Cash was a bigger personality, that's for sure, and probably had a bigger impact. But was it the musician Nelson's that Willie done was? A lot of songwriting for other people, and I think he's probably just contributed more to the to the whole art form than Johnny Cash did. Nice. That persuaded me to say Willie Nelson. There you go. I mean, I like Johnny. Yeah, I like Johnny Cash, but Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain is probably one of my favorite songs. Oh yeah. Uh, Van Halen with Roth or Hager? I don't know either one that well. <laughs> Van Halen in general. <laughs> Van Halen. That's situational. A- there you go. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Dave? Situational. <laughs> I guess. Uh, David Lee Roth was obviously... Really good, but so yeah, Sammy Hagar. I don't know. Yes, Sammy Hagar is kind of a douche, <laughs> is he? There like we go. The David he did on his own. Yeah, what is he? The Red Rocker? I don't know. Red Rocket. No, I, think... I had an album when I got my record player. It was like blue in the background and like a red car on there or something, and it was just a terrible album. Oh shoot! That guy's a giant twat. Uh, what restaurant that has closed would you want to make a comeback? Ooh. God. Sir Beef. Yes! Hey, our buddy Garrick Henry is going to love hearing you say that. You think? So we had a tradition when I was first in Evansville. Have you ever been to a Sir Beef? Never even heard no. of a Sir Beef. <laughs> it was down in Evansville. Yeah. We would go on Friday. I think it was Friday they had those for lunch. French dippers like those. Oh, yeah. And we would go. It was just, we'll have to look up some photos later. But it was a tradition, like Sir Beef Runs was like our Friday lunch spot. Every Friday, Sir Beef. Heck yeah. And we had to you had to order your Sir Beef like in a certain like manner. Like you had to say sir in front of everything. I don't know if that's a true thing or not. We did it. It was just a Of course you did. (laughs) Yeah. So Sir or Sire. Sir. Sir Beef. Sir Beef. It's like a Sir Beef. Oh, I thought there was an E on the end. Mm -mm. Smoke Dragon? What restaurant would you bring back? I almost said a roast beef place, but really racks, but uh, probably Ryan's. Oh no, shit, yeah. solid. Where was the closest one? Martinsville. I don't know. There was one in Richmond. Where I grew. Was there? I think there was one in Martinsville. I think there was one in Martinsville. Was there one in Evansville? That's a Rafferty's. No, yeah, but no the the old hog trough down there was a uh, sirloin stockade. Yeah, Ryan's is a is a hog trough. It's a buffet. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. So that's. Pond Roast Steakhouse. Pretty much. For me. That yeah, was yeah, one yeah, I yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I can just remember the ice cream. Oh, hell yeah. Where you get, yeah. Uh, anyways. So, uh, ACDC, Bon Scott or Brian Johnson? I don't give a shit either way. Yeah, that's actually one of my topics for a later date is how much I don't like ACDC. Yikes. Anything ACDC did sucks. Yikes. Oh, wow. Shots fired. I don't know enough about I ACDC. I like big balls. <laughs> But when we had Thunderstruck up at the resort, they put on a hell of a show. They're a um, tribute band. Yep. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Questions for Esquire. <laughs> 500,000 listeners or Southridge wins another state baseball title. Southridge wins another state t- baseball title. Oh, God. Bullshit. No. I'll take the state title anytime. It's a hell of a thing for a community. 
What's the update with you sitting next to future Hall of Famer Curdy G this baseball season? Well, Corky, um, my invitation is out there for Curdy G. All he has to do is call. Scheduling wise, I'll be coaching on the diamond myself probably a lot of those nights. But if I'm available and Curdy G wants me, surely they could do. I without, will be there. Uh, a little bit of player development, and uh, you know, spare you the time to get up there. Middle school. I'm talking about middle school. Well, schedule. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I Corky that. Uh, uh, that is certainly there uh, to be. Questions for Long Dong. At what age did the mustache become a staple? <sighs> oh, Long Dong. Two, <laughs> two, two and a half, two years ago, wrestling season. Two years ago. Three and a half. Maxwell <laughs> was wrestling. So then he he's played basketball two years now, so. Yeah, so I guess three years ago. We're going to have to get together with our buddy Teddy Hoops. It's golf season soon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another question for Long Dong. Is the cigarette bandit still dropping ashes on the streets of Huntingburg? I haven't seen him in a while. He, he struck again here about. I saw it one time. That yeah. pile that was dropped off because it was right there on Chestnut yeah. 231. Same spot every or, time. Not 231, 64. 60. You knew what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. And I just, it's a hell of a pile. Yeah, it's actually at the intersection of. It's it's actually called Ch- Sixth and Chestnut is where it's at, and that is six Sixth Street is two thirty one, no sixty four sixty four. Yeah. Sorry, so it would be sixty four and two thirty one right there by the DMI warehouse. Yeah, and where you're coming down the hill for to go to Kneehouse Trail, and it's always in the straight lane or the, excuse me, it's in the turn lane. The right-hand turn lane on the center line of that is always where it's at. Do you know who it is? I have a good, strong... Can we just put them on blast? No. If we say allegedly, it's okay. Absolutely not. If we say allegedly? No. Okay. Must be someone of great import. It's not great importance, but it's someone that could potentially... uh, Have you fired? No. Oh. No. We'll just talk about it on air. Off Off air. air. Off air. Not on air. Off air. Uh, Questions for long stroke or smoker? Will you ever add a sidecar to your motorcycle? Negatory. Have you ever thought about doing butcher work on the side? Yes, I have. Keep rocking it, Corky Schmidt. Corky, hey, thanks for the questions, them. buddy. Every uh, every just keep sending them. I mean, we love them. We'll read them. Uh, hopefully, we'll get together with we'll you have, soon. What that, we'll have we to need to have him out here to the. Yeah. We need to have a Friday night recording so, and bring him out. One thing you guys don't know about Corky is is like he. He's he's a huge Reds fan, which is nah anyway. But he's also a jack of many trades. Yeah, I he, believe that. He's got a lot of uh he's got a lot of different badges in his pocket. Yeah. And I think that that's you would like old Cork yeah, Dog. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well you've met you've yeah, met Yeah, we've uh, met. Yeah, yeah. He's met all he came I met out to work once and then yeah. uh, at the golf course. Exactly. There. Yeah. Yeah, and I think he's met Red too. Our buddy Red, Dustin Harris. Yeah. Which they're busy right now getting ready for uh, Corn Ferry up there at the resort. So yeah, buddy. it'll be interesting to see. But it's yeah. that time. We've had a good run today. It's been good. It's been fun. Smoke has survived his trauma to his face. Big fella survived the surgery to his foot. Couch guy's still got diabetes. Only one of the group to have it. But uh, keep on talking. TikTok user 679er. But it's time for The Last Pass. Brought to you by our friends at Hof Outdoor Power. The Last Pass is proudly sponsored by Hof Outdoor Power. As March unfolds, signaling the arrival of warmer days and sunnier skies, we bid farewell to the snow and embrace the promise of a vibrant spring season. And with it comes a new set of tasks. Mowing grass, trimming around the house, and nurturing our outdoor spaces to perfection. But fret not, dear homeowner, for the solution to all of your lawn care needs await you at Hof Outdoor Power. Why waste precious time scouring for deals when you can trust the best in the business to handle your outdoor power equipment requirements? Whether you're in the market for a reliable Cub Cadet or a powerful Kubota mowing machine, Hof Outdoor Power has you covered. So why wait? Visit the fellows at Hof Outdoor Power today and let us help you turn your lawn dreams into reality. All righty. Here we go. Big fella. What's your last pass? <clears throat> um, when life throws you lemons, make lemonade. And mix it with vodka. <laughs> no, don't do that. You don't need vodka to have a good time. 
When life throws you, <laughs> <laughs> when life throws you lemons, make lemonade. Um, you know, adapt and overcome. Carpe diem, whatever other sort of cliche uh, motivational speeches you could come up with. But, I mean, yeah, my foot's in a boot. Yeah, I've probably got a shit ton of stitches in my ankle. But I'm going to make the best of it. I'm here having fun. Wouldn't miss this for the world. I did piss in a bucket earlier, which is pretty wild. But we'll Breaking t- down the fourth wall, we'll, you couldn't piss the second time. Though. We'll, we'll take care of that uh, later. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just going to do what the doctor tells me to do and hopefully get uh, back in action because I do have the fishing bug really bad. Oh, yeah. I was watching. Uh, I bet you can fish with a boot. You can. I was watching uh, Nick Ublor, local kid. Oh, yeah. Watching him online uh, earlier, some of his stuff. And then, uh, you know, I just I'm ready for the weather to break. I really am ready to get outside. The Easter flowers are booming. Uh It'll be good. It'll be good Friday before you know it. The morels will be popping and the crappie will be biting. And I'm just ready to get outside. Hell yeah. That's all I got. Smoke dragon. Well, we're going to forego a smokerism today for a PSA. It's getting that time of year. It's nice out. It's sunny out. Bunch of good folks want to spend time on the motorcycles. Oh, like yeah. A good mm-hmm. buddy the other day that had somebody pull out in front of him and. Luckily, he's paying enough attention that he was able to slow things down enough. It looks like he probably still totaled his bike Ooh. or real close to it if he didn't. But he was able to walk away, so that's good. So uh, put your phone down, open your eyes, and pay attention where you're going out there. Yeah. That, that's it. Loud pipes save lives. Hell yeah. Yeah. There we go. What do you got? Um, it is that. It's getting real close to that time of the year where we just – get into good weather and uh, baseball season and golf and everything that's going on. And um, just glad we've made it through uh, because this will air March 8th, I think we said, right? Mm -hmm. So we've gotten through January and February, which is crazy how time flies. But, uh, you know, we, we get out of these dog days of winter, uh, still be checking on each other because there could be some holdover still, you know, having some of that seasonal problem, uh, especially as you kind of, you know, get into Easter and that holiday, that that's a, that's a big family holiday sometimes for folks. So, um, but other than that, you know, we're going to keep on rocking. Uh, things keep growing here. we got a lot of things going on. I think we're going to have a good summer with the show and, um, you know, we, uh, uh, got some interesting folks we want lined up for the show and we're working on some tech pieces to, yeah. Uh get interviews and some different things and uh we've listened to the people. I think people like us when we interview folks and talk to folks and yeah. Uh you know, we need to bring some other folks back. Our buddy Curdy G kind of come in and give us a recap on the year. Maybe maybe this summer he'd be a good one to have. Uh, I'm sure we're going to sit down and talk to our buddy Dustin Harris as mm-hmm. the Corn Ferry Tour gets close to our backyard, but uh you know, we just got a lot of good things. We kind of found our groove and uh it feels good and uh, we're still having fun doing it, and we just appreciate the support. And thanks to Couch Guy for the new candles, uh, and Couch Guy being the only guy that has diabetes in this right. group. So that's been out. 